Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to this week's installment of Fabricator Series Segments where every single week I upload one more chapter, sometimes two, of how to build a two chassis front end which is demonstrated on this S13. So, if you are not subscribed already to the Fabricator Series YouTube channel, absolutely go down right now and push that button so you don't miss the next week's uploads. If you're not familiar with the Fabricator Series, head over right now or after this video to the Fabricator Series uh, dot com and, and there you'll find the build blogs on how to build a two chassis front end where each week there will be another episode posted and in there you can get onto the discussion of everything, ask questions, talk about it amongst everybody else and all kinds of other good stuff. There's also a lot of great stuff for you to learn while you're over there. You can also check up on facebook.com slash the fabricator series. There's always another upload, another update, something else going on and I'm also a big fan of Instagram so head over to Instagram at the dot fabricator. Check all the information below here, and I'll have all of that there. If you need to get a hold of me, send a message, drop a comment, drop me an email, do whatever you got to do, and I'll always try to get back to you. So without any further delay, here's this week's episode of How to Build a Tube Chassis Front End. takes a smasher into the truck in front of them, what do you do? Well, here's a couple of things. You can let insurance settle it out. Of course, they're gonna do their best to tell you that the car is two and a half decades old and that they're just gonna give you like 50 bucks for it and you know, hey, sorry about your loss. But we know it's all worth a lot more than that, right? Well, you could go and try to clean it all up and bang it back out, maybe replace a few pieces here and there. That could work, but how much money do you really wanna put into it? A car that's totaled now, you got a salvage title. That kinda of sucks, right? How about you go for option three? You start pursuing your dream of having the ultimate S13. You take a saw out of the whole front end of this thing, you cut it all off, and you build fresh. Build new, build tube. That's right, I'm gonna show you today how to build a tube chassis front end on an S13. Let's get cracking. It's time for you to play executive. Should you or should you not proceed with this build? Think about it for a second here. What are some of the problems that you have when a car gets into a collision? Frame damage is the main one. Your main chassis rails or your main chassis structural components, if they're crooked, it doesn't matter how many tubes you throw in here, you just threw them onto a crooked chassis. That's not worth it in the end. You can't have a crooked chassis that's gonna go racing down the block. I mean, it's just not gonna work. So look very carefully at the damage and really assess it. So. I'm checking everything out on this one, and before obviously it rolled into the shop, I took you know my usual visual assessment on here. The crash beams, the bumper brackets, the actual chassis rails themselves, the main rails are down low while the damage and the impact was up top here. That means that I likely don't have a crooked chassis here, and even if it is, it's very, very minor. I see absolutely no deformation or any kind of damage to the main rails itself. So that means this chassis should be good to go. We're going to take some measurements and verify that. But the main point here is be extremely honest with yourself and your build, especially if this is somebody else's build. Do you really want to weld on uh, a really beautiful front end to a crooked chassis? I mean, maybe your client will never know, but you will. And that just kind of really, if you don't have the integrity to hold up on that one, you shouldn't be doing this. But really be honest with yourself. Is it worth it in the end? It's ever, never, ever worth it in the end. So make sure that if you have something that is not salvageable, don't try to do it. Okay, so in order to get all of this cracking, let's get pretty much all this front end off of here. Fenders, bumper, radiator, core support, everything has to come out to get out of the way. And then we can get on to uh, slicing it up. Moment of truth. Okay, so this is an area that shouldn't need a whole lot of explanation, but I'll just kind of sum it up real quick. Anything that's attached to the forward section of the strut tower needs to go away. 
get rid of it. The radiator, the condenser, if you're equipped with air conditioning, the lights, the buckets, the rails, the everything that's attached to the front section of the car needs to go. Get rid of it. That doesn't need a whole lot of explanation for the video, so there you go. Now we have to unbury this wiring harness. Now you can actually go in there and unplug everything and pull it out in one piece, but since we're slicing the front end off anyway, I'm just gonna cut the wiring harness out of there, or at least cut the areas to get the wiring harness out there. I'm not going to cut the harness. So the harness is gonna to have to be rerouted once we build all the tubes again anyway. So if you look carefully through this little section right here, you can actually cut that up, just cut a section of it out, and then we can take the harness, send it back here, and then we'll have lots of room to cut the front end off and work in there. market says there is more than one way to chop the front end of an S13 off. So here we go. There's only one wrong way to do this and the wrong way is to cut too much metal or to cut the wrong spot off. So here's a couple of tips and tricks for you to do it. One, I always recommend cutting off in small segments, not trying to cut the entire thing off in one shot. I mean seriously, I, it's, it's kind of hard to wrestle that around and, uh, and <laughs> take an entire front end off when you're sitting there chopping away with the saw. It usually uh, it makes a mess and it's very difficult to maneuver around. So to access certain areas to get a very accurate cut, cut as much off as you want. Trim the fat, get rid of the bulk, whatever the case is, and then go back over for the final details. It also helps to mark all of this out. So if you notice on here, I've got some bright red markings on here that tell me when and where I want to cut everything in which order to do so. So to make it easier, use a bright color, mark it out, scribble it, do whatever the case is. So again, to recap, take off only small segments, use bright materials, take as much time as you need, kind of trim the fat on here, okay? The only wrong way is to cut the wrong amount off or to cut the wrong piece off. So again, take your time, make sure you look it out, scope it out, make sure you plan it out inside of your head, then get to cutting. Remember the golden rule. You can always take metal away, but you can't necessarily put it back on. 